this is it. This is strange horticulture. So let's go ahead and get right into it. The streets of Undermere are narrow and claustrophobic. In many places, the buildings lean out at the upper floors so that neighbors can reach across and shake hands or more likely exchange unpleasantries. Strange Horticulture is a small shop situated away from the main thoroughfares, but it has the advantage of being one of the few buildings in the Undermere that stands alone. Plants, you may have noticed, need light, and light is in short supply at street level in this town. Recently, the shop passed to me after the death of my uncle. There is much to learn, but one thing is already clear. The rare and unusual plants that he stocked have their uses, after all. This game features some small text if you're having difficulty reading. You can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Ooh, we are a fan of accessibility. Oh, we've already got some plants. We got a watering can. <gasps> we got the kitty. <gasps> oh, look at it stretch. Most important part of this game. Being able to boop the cat awake is, that's just how things go, you know? I found it, an excerpt on the elusive wandering boo. Come to the library and Ambleside, and I'll tell you all about it. I even found something on the Gilded Dendra that might be of interest. Simone. P.S. Give Hellbore a good scratch behind the ear for me. Right, the cat's name is Hellbore. Adorable. Okay, the will to explore, closer inspection, a rising dread. Um, okay, so it wants me to press the bell. Victoria Gray. <laughs> Hellbore's eyes! I must have walked past the shop a hundred times without ever stopping to look. I came here because I have an unusual request. At night, I hear whispered voices, too faint to hear clearly, coming from the floor above me, but nobody lives up there. The rooms are empty. My curiosity got the better of me. I must find out what they are saying. Um, so I realize now that my webcam might be covering the text. I could move my camera to the bottom, but it would look ugly. It is indeed covering. Alright, alright, alright. Ah! Oh no! My ladder shades are gone! We'll just have to deal. We'll just have to deal. I'm down here right now. Look at all that stuff up there. Woo! It's painful. <laughs> to be fair, it doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. Okay, we need St. John's Poppy. Hold that. Now I'm blocking something else. <laughs> Looks like they're utilizing their screen very well, though. You can drag items from here onto my desk. There's a letter here? Dangerous plant grows sparsely in the hills to the northeast of Back Barrel. Keep it secret. <gasps> Ooh, we're gonna like have to look for some dangerous plants. Strange Book of Plants by Wilfred Voynich. This encyclopedia can be used as a reference to help identify plants. Note that where I have included sketches, these are not always intended for, intended as an aid to identification. Often the description will be more useful to you. St. John's Poppy. The vibrant petals of this flower can be brewed to create a draught that will greatly improve the inhibitor's hearing ability. Flowers of St. John's Poppy are bright red with a yellow center. So these ones. Yeah, they, those look about right. So we can put this on here. So this is St. John's Poppy. Use plant. Plant identified! Rewards. Book entry. Okay. According to legend, clap... William can be used to open any lock, no matter how complex or secure. Ooh. Okay. Wait, there's another note. Looks like a little bell plant. Okay. What's the will to explore? You have neither the time nor inclination. You can wonder your plants using the watering can to earn will to explore. So, St. John's Poppy. Watered. Oh. Okay. How long do I have to water? A few moments later. Oh, okay. We have a will to explore now. Huh. So we can, like, go all these places. Every single square can be explored. Come to the library in Ambleside. Ambleside. The library here in Ambleside is one of my favorite haunts. Simone, the librarian, is always helpful and friendly, and shares some of my passion for unusual plants. Today she's grinning ear to ear and can't wait to show me what she's found. Two book entries. The Gilded Dendra. Oh! I wanted to read what the other one was. Okay. Um, cool. I guess we need to keep watering. Eventually. 
I too like to go for a walk after tending to things around the house. Wait, we got a will now. We got a will to explore. Dangerous plant grows sparsely in the hills to the northeast of Back Barrow. Back Barrow. Back Barrow. Back Barrow. So to the sparsely in the hills to the northeast. So like right here. The weather changes fast out in the hills. What started as a gray morning has turned to bright sunshine. Good thing, too, because it takes me several hours to find what I came for. By the time I'm done, a cloud is sweeping back over. A cloak of unwelcome shade. Okay, okay. We got a dangerous plant. Good to know, good to know. So we've done both those. I don't know what this means. Can it go in the clues? No, it also goes in the, the letters. Alright, uh, let's get our next customer in here. David Schaffer. Good morning. Bloody awful weather out there today. Sounds lovely, though. Good for the plants, though, eh? Hey. I got a letter for you. A letter? Oh! I got a lot of will to explore. Gosforth is a hateful town. I was beaten and robbed and left to die in the streets. After many days, I was rescued by a kind stranger. Just as I had come to fear that wickedness had infected the heart of every soul in that cursed place. I began my recovery in the woods to the south of the town with a group of travelers. On the northeast corner of the wood, I sat and stared at a bright flower, and tears flowed down my face at the reminder that there is beauty in this world. I shall be returning to Undermere soon. Warmest regards, Amos Duncan. The woods to the south of Gosforth? Gosforth. Woods to the south. This is a lot of woods, but we'll start here, maybe. Okay. Cool. Cool. Well, we need more will to explore, I guess, but is there anybody else here? Gilbert Ames. Something got those witches in the forest stirred up. They're not letting anyone through. Anyway, I'm here now. I've brought Fennet from the south to trade for some lemon dandy. Hardly worth the trouble when you factor in the extra miles I've had to cover to get here. So, lemon dandy. Its curled leaves are thought to be the origin of the name of this plant, supposedly referring to a peeled lemon rind. Among several medicinal uses, the flower of the lemon dandy is mostly associated with curing afflictions of the heart. That looks kind of similar. Curled leaves. Yeah, it has curled leaves. This is what, uh, what he wants. Lemon dandy. Plant identified. And we got a plant in exchange. It's a thing! Wow! What is it? <laughs> oh, we got a will we got some will to explore out of that. So this is Gosforth. These are woods. On the northeast corner of the wood. This corner. Okay, okay. I'll just read the whole thing if there's multiple squares. <laughs> the wood has a calming effect on my mind. It does me good to escape into nature, away from the stench and clamor of Undermere. It is not long before I spy a bright flower among the trees. Oh, that's gorgeous! Look at it! How is it still day one? Honestly, I've been walking around everywhere. Maybe I have a teleporting plant. Okay, ding! My dreams are becoming more vivid. Faye Swift. I saw a woman, her face hidden behind a mask, and next to her a terrifying black skeletal creature. It stood tall, its roving head scanning the landscape, and through it I had no discernible face. It could, I could sense a hint of expression about its features. Those past weeks have been getting worse. Or these past weeks have been getting worse. I need sleep. Wait, what's this mean? Oh! Character info. It looks like this is a recurring person. Faye grew up with her mother. Her father was rarely violent, but once is enough. Agreed! When he struck her, it finally broke the hold he had over her mother, and she fled in the night. The sleeping Faye held close. Faye often has vivid dreams, but has never considered that other people do not. She came to strange horticulture, seeking re relief from her nightmares. Forest Camphrey. The camphrey produces a beautiful, rounded, dark blue cluster made up by many smaller flowers. Okay, many smaller flowers, and it's blue. Like you? It's pungent, but not unpleasant. The bulb is a soft yellow. The weave leaves are waxy. Yeah, so this should be the forest... Uh, camp free. At least I believe this is the one. If it's not, I might have just killed this person. Hey! I correctly identified it. Let's go. <laughs> okay. What's farmer's worry? 
A spongy mushroom with potent abilities, only safe to consume in small quantities. Grants great strength for short periods at the expense of severe fatigue once the effect has worn off. So, it's a mushroom, but we have two kinds of mushrooms. Not as spongy as most mushrooms, the fact that the undersides are somewhat sharp. Red spores protrude from the caps. Probably not that, then. I guess maybe we don't have it. Ding! Hellbore's still trying to sleep. Got any wandering blue boo? It always reminds me of- oh, what's his name? That old hermit inventor, the Wanderer. Anyway, the boo, if you got it. So called because this fungus can move slowly in the dark. It has been known to cover distances of up to several meters in a single night. The gills on the underside of this mushroom form beautiful flowing lines. They are also quite hard and sharp, earning this plant the nickname Fingers Bane. Oh, it's you? Uh, for the record, never. I mean, never identify mushrooms just off one thing, or any plant for that matter. This, in a video game, is enough to identify something. In real life, it is not, okay? If you see something that says like, oh, these orange mushrooms are good to eat. Don't go eating every orange mushroom, okay? I'm serious about this. So like you've eaten all the mushrooms. No, Snoop Pigeon. Oh no. Okay, we've got a book entry. The Lady of Summer. Age with conditions of memory deterioration associated with old age. I still don't know what this means. Oh, I can put the, th the notes that I don't need anymore up here. That's handy, like that. And then I can store this down here. Cool. Make sure stuff isn't cluttered. Oh, magnifying glass. Okay. And this thing. What is this? I don't know. But it looks like we're closed, so let's go ahead and end our first day. Oh. Just like tarot. Row H, the third river. It started when she found something. Something that she was not meant to find. A book. Tucked away in a forgotten corner of the Ambleside Library. What does this mean? Very interesting! It's a Saturday. Okay. Oh, okay, so we have this card now. Hellboy! <gasps> he purrs! Oh, you can't pet him! You can pet him! Row H, Third River. One, two, three. A dead deer in the river, yellowed bone protruding from a matted hide and rotted flesh. Death for one provides life for many. Hello there. That looks a lot like some other plants we have. Looks very similar to whatever this thing is. I have a feeling that's gonna be a point of confusion. Alright. <laughs> Startles him every time! Isidore Burbage. Bring me a sample of Apius Demesis and be quick about it. That damn cat is setting off my allergies. Shouldn't have an animal in a shop like this. Oh boy, you're another recurring character. Burbage is a rich man who inherited a fortune but never experienced the love of his parents. He expects people to do his bidding and is quick to anger. There are many in Undermere who would be glad to see the back of him. But with wealth comes power and few would challenge him to his face. Okay. Um, Apis Demisus. Am I gonna have to look through like literally every single one of these? Clavis, Agarcola Timor, Camium, Camium. Apis Demisis. Grandi root. Uh, Gandy root. Gandy root. A plant with medicinal properties that can aid with digestive troubles when prepared correctly. Care must be taken, however, as the rough leaves can be an irritant. Only the petals are safe for consumption. I think it's this. The leaves are coarse to the touch. Rich boy with daddy issues. What if we just gave him like a random plant? <laughs> like, I wonder how this uh, game reacts to that kind of thing. For you. Candy root, plant identified. Meek do. The beautiful flowers made up of many smaller florets make this sought after decorative plant, although it is difficult to care for. It may be a pleasant looking plant, but touching the leaves against bare skin will result in painful sores. Cool. Um, glad to know that. <laughs> Alright, next person! Lake Undermere is looking fine in the sunshine today. Here's your mail. Thank you. We just got a letter. There's an old slate mine at Hard Knot that has some interesting looking fungi growing in it. I've never seen anything like them before. They seem to have found a niche in the 
damp, dark tunnels left by the tramways. I thought you might be interested. Warmest regards, Amos Duncan. This dude really, really is quite helpful. Hard not. Um, White Seer Cave? Hard not. An iron gate rusted by years of abandonment sits across the entrance of the tram tunnel. Rusted it may be, but it won't budge. Locked. We need the thing that can open any lock. The clavillium. Which means we have this. This looks pretty similar. The flowers are made up by many small bluer flowers. They smell pleasant. Well, since we're trying this out on a lock, I don't think this could go too wrong. Yeah! The gate swings open slowly, complaining loudly on its rusty hinges. After a short exploration of the tunnel, you are rewarded. Three plants? Holy crap. Aguria, when burned, incense made from the woody stem can enhance psychic abilities, strengthening the clarity of visions and prophecies. Light blue flowers, like rounded tufts of gentle lambs, will characterize this plant. I think we have that. Is it this? So that might be Aguria. So, we got that. And this is the, um, the clavillium. We shouldn't be just calling them by name. We should also have, like, what they actually are on there as well, right? Lock picker! Yeah, that's our lock picking plant! Okay, let's see. Look at all those mushrooms! Oh my god, they're so pretty! I love them! They're so cool! Okay, let's see who else is coming. Reuben Ward. I'm headed to Grisdale Forest, investigating a possible murder there. Mmm. Can't say I'm looking forward to it. The sisterhood are a sacred of lot, and they're not keen to talk to me. Their leader, the Arda, or whatever they call her, she's dead. My instinct is they're hiding something. I was hoping you might have some fox button that would help me win them over. Reuben Ward. Reuben works with the police on murder cases. He's a kind, good-humored man, but beneath the mask he is deeply sad. His only child, a daughter, had seemed troubled for some time before running away from home several years ago. The victims whose stories he tries to uncover are all somebody's son, somebody's daughter. The search for answers drives him forward, piecing together the tra the logic of life and death. Fox button. Fox button. Is... Looks like this. An offering of Fox Button is considered by some to represent a contract of friendship between strangers. Thick, shiny leaves grow in opposing pairs along the stems. Uh. You? Blue flowers, stiff leaves. Yeah, thick, shiny leaves grow in opposing pairs. This looks like Fox Button to me. Fox Button, for gifts, I guess. LOL. So, like that. That wasn't Fox Button. I must be better prepared next time. Oh. That's not Fox Button. Um, it's not Fox Button. Cool. Okay. So that's what happens when I get it wrong. Oh, it's you, isn't it? So this is why, this is why book guidebooks have multiple points, okay? That's why they have multiple, um, luckily, he's not planning on eating it. <laughs> Yay! That's more like it. Brimlock. The leaves are waxy and tough. Gotta give the kitty pets. Gotta give the kitty pets. Who doesn't love giving little kitty pets? Okay. Victoria Gray. I was able to make out the whispered voices last night with the help of St. John's Poppy. There's a medium using the room. Illegally, I might add. Holding midnight seances for gullible grievers. Oh. Is there a plant you know of that I could... Used to give them a scare and drive them away? Harlequin Blue. What does Harlequin Blue do? When the bushy blue flower heads die back, they release seeds with a downy pappus, which assists in wind dispersal. Once dried and hardened, the stems can be burned as incense. As they burn, they let out high-pitched shrieks, widely believed to be spirits of dead souls trapped within the plant. Okay, that could work. Uh... I, I, I don't know if I actually properly identified that one. Uh... Then maybe we did mislabel this one. Might as well. Okay, this is Harlequin Blue. We mislabeled it. Okay. It, it, it's used very similarly, though, to the Agoria, so that's probably why. For pranksters like me... Oh, wait, we gotta give it a blue tag. Alright. Ding! You may have heard the rumors that our Arda is dead. May Arduinia bring her spirit peace. 
the nature of her death is unusual. The sisterhood does not often look to the outside for help, but this is beyond our knowledge. And it's probably beyond my knowledge too, I got a book though. If you show my sisters this letter, they will allow you entry to the forest. To be assured of your discretion, we require that you use Mary's breath to bind yourself to secrecy. Mary's breath? The wide waxy leaves allow this plant to collect large amounts of water it requires. It is said that a person can be bound to secrecy using Mary's breath. Oh, wow. Wide waxy leaves. Did you have waxy leaves? No, stiff leaves. Hey, this one doesn't have any flowers. Smooth, waxy leaves, they're wide too. Brimlock, the leaves are waxy and tough. I think this is Mary's breath. How is that even supposed to work? Magic, duh. Like this thing can fucking pick any lock. Of course it, there's magic. Oh uh, wait, we need the bio. Bethany Coleman. Beth was born into a loving family, but never felt settled. She sought out a higher purpose when she was still young and left home at 14 to join the sisterhood of Ardu- Arduina? The head of the sisterhood, the Arda, took a liking to her and helped her develop a renewed purpose, caring for the forest and putting her faith in the goddess Arduina. Now her mentor has been murdered and Beth is looking for answers. Um... That wasn't Mary's breath. <sighs> okay, not Mary's breath. That's all we know about it. It's not Mary's breath. <laughs> Soft purple with a sweet scent. We need wide, waxy leaves. The dark blue petals are soft and feathery to touch. My fingers ache from handling this plant. Well, that's not it. What about this? The veined leaves have a waxy finish. These are wide, these are waxy. Are you Mary's breath? Yay, we found Mary's breath. We got a letter. We have failed our duty as protectors of the forest. Our secrets have been stolen and the Arda has been murdered. You will find us deep in Grisdale Forest, a mile from the lake shore across from Torver. Please help us. Yours in hope, the sisterhood. Grisdale Forest. Grisdale Forest, a mile from the lakeshore, across from Torver. So, like, here? A sister tries to stop me from entering, but I show her the letter and she lets me through. I am ushered into a walled courtyard, and then through a large oak door, along a corridor, and down a set of stone stairs into a cool basement. Lying on the table, draped in silk, is the Arda. There's not a mark on her, but her mouth, but her open eyes are black. Her mouth, her veins, her hair, all black as a raven's wing. Do you know what could do this? Asked my escort. I set to work. Wren. It's a very simple name for it. The long leaves of the wren are known to turn black in the presence of certain poisons and can be used to detect them. Though it has no flower, it is said to smell unpleasant to those who have known death and sweet to those who have not. This must be it. Look at this. It's a scent that scratches the back of my throat. <gasps> like, look at that environmental storytelling right there, huh? Right? That's the wren! I got an achievement! Apprentice! I extract a sample of the Arda's blood and introduce it to the wren, and my suspicions are confirmed immediately. The leaves of the wren turn black, which can only mean one thing. Gilded dendra poisoning. Upon presenting my findings, I am rushed away quickly. The sisters do not want me hanging around, it seems. They do, however, send me on my way with a couple of plants, which I am grateful for. Achievement got. GG, easy! I know, right? We won! <laughs> Ooh, those are pretty. Gilded Dendra. Do not drink the stuff this plant. The lips and veins turn black as the blood comes to Dendra's miasma. Even touching the leaves of the plant can be- My fingers ache from handling this plant. This is the Gilded Dendra. Uh-oh, oopsie. So, we have one. Good to know. Good to know we're a suspect in the murder of, uh, a coven leader. Right? Right? <laughs> okay. Isidore Burbridge. It's you again. I'm this close to reporting you, halfwit. The last plant you gave me has made my skin itch furiously. Care must be taken, however, as the rough leaves can be an irritant. Only the petals are safe for consumption. I'll have your little shop shut down and torn to the ground if you don't make this right. Butterdale or Meek do? Butterdale. All manner of skin rashes. Okay, so we can either give him an actual thing or... Meek do. Maybe a pleasant looking plant, but touching the leaves against bare skin will result in painful sores! Oh no! Oh! Oh no! Well, we're going to label them. Uh, hopefully. 
many smaller florets like this one we just got this right no 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 never mind oh wait maybe it's this small leaves delicate flowers you won't just have daddy issues now meek do don't be rash um at least i think that's meek do uh in butterdale uh so it has these leaves it's dark green and it smells buttery light buttery scent this is butterdale do we give him the rash cure or do we give him something that will make him worse we have those two options meek do or butterdale uh oh uh oh people hate this man but he is the customer though <laughs> And people trust me with plants. Do I want people to lose trust in me? I have a feeling Snoop Pigeon wants me to give the meek do. <laughs> Make him use we can't tell him stuff you do. <laughs> We're not gonna bind him to secrecy with Mary's breath. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> he, he threatens I'll have your little shop shut down and tore it to the ground if you don't make this right. Well, I mean, it would be a shame if my store was, um shut down right away, but at the same time, it would be entertaining to have to fight to try to keep my store alive. You know what, let's, let's do Butterdale, cause I wanna, I, I don't know. I don't think I want to get him on my bad side. Hashtag content. It would be hashtag content to just give him this. Put the leaf against bare skin will result in painful sores. Remember, this dude's gonna be applying a ton of it, topically. A ton of it. You're right. You're right. If we're not making content, what are we doing this for? Let's go. Meek do plants identified. Oh God! End of the day. Oh no. We might have a legal battle. We have to attend to. It was for science, so you gotta understand. To be fair, this is very good to know. 